And uh... okay, so this is Stephen Ramsden with SolarAstronomy.org, and now we're filming the Coronado double stack 90 millimeter hydrogen alpha telescope. We're seeing the sun in 656 nanometer wavelength. Today is December 31st, 2011. Happy New Year. This is a Canon 7D filming this at 30 frames per second on the highest ISO setting. And I got my friend Neil Farmer here with me, who is on the solarastronomy.org triathlon team. How do you, Neil? I'm doing fine. Good. We're going to move down on the ISO here and show the effect. There you can see some filaments coming in. And I'll get back down there a little bit. I'm going to tune the scope a little bit. You see the reflection comes in when I tune it, but you won't see that in the eyepiece, obviously. Just in this. Now, go down on the ISO a little bit more so Neil can see some other features. And of course, they're clear as a bell in there. He was just telling me how clear everything is. <laughs> very clear, very clear. Yeah. So, uh, now we'll go back up on the ISO. As you can see, it's rather difficult to get a presentable image on a 7D. That's why we use the DMK 8 bit cameras and the PGR 12 bit cameras or 16 bit cameras in the field. But this is a great way to broadcast it to uh, students if you don't have a laptop and all the other equipment. So let's go back up to high. There you go. You see some promises coming in. That's a pretty good one there, isn't it, Neil? Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. You see the bright areas there? That's hotter plasma, and you can see a little bit of the filament and some promises coming off the side. And there's that pesky reflection again. But as you see, if I move that out of the view, the image degrades. So we'll put it right about there see what happens and that's a reflection of the, of the Coronado ERF okay and the website solarastronomy.org come see us alright so it's December 31st happy new year's we're looking at the sun through a Coronado 90 millimeter calcium K scope showing you 393 nanometers it's a purplish color and this is a Canon 7D DSLR as you can see the sunspots are on the uh, left side which would be the right side in reality and the bright areas are called facula or plage and they indicate hotter temperature gases this is what it looks like through this scope and this is a mid 90s 90 millimeter calcium case scope from Coronado David Lunt manufactured so enjoy that I'll change the ISO settings here a little bit and you can see what it does there you go that's an interesting Interesting look there. Back down to low ISO. I think that's pretty cool. My buddy Rush was over here looking at it with me too. He's never seen the sun this way before. So what do you think, man? What does it look like to you? It's like a big purple circle. Can you be any more detailed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can see the lighter white spots. See the sunspot? Mm -hmm. I was just telling them it's about three, four times the size of the whole Earth. And that that's cooler gas on the sun's surface being drawn down by magnetic activity while the facula and the plage, the white areas, are hotter, hotter gas. Have you ever seen the sun before in this wavelength? I have not. This is in the visible light spectrum, but it's near ultraviolet, so it's more or less near ultraviolet. So, you know, the colors of the spectrum go from red through yellows and up to purples, and then on each side of that is invisible. visible wavelengths of energy that we can't see but in that little tiny spectrum of visible light this is on the far right which would be higher frequency Wow. okay and this is uh, the sun's putting this energy out all the time it's just that it's also mixed in with all the other visible light wavelengths the sun puts out it makes it look like that which you can't even look at <laughs> that's all the wavelengths mixed together up there and this is just one wavelength separated out so you can see features on the sun's disk what do you think about that I think it's awesome Okay, <laughs> and there you go. Enjoy it. And here's the sun again without the 2x teleconverter in calcium K wavelength, 393 nanometers. As you can see, it's not drifting as quickly through the frame as it was when it was 2x, but it is moving. Really fantastic image if you ask me. I'll turn up the ISO on this one so you can see. Right, we can get some flares out of it. Prominences. Nope. Anyway, 
back down to what I would image at, which would be around around there. And that's what it looks like through the Coronado 90 millimeter calcium K scope, American made, 1995. Really a fantastic scope. It looks the same way through the eyepiece. This is brought to you by the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project at www.charliebates.org. We see about 50,000, 60,000 students a year at schools around the southeast mostly and teach uh, everyone about how the sun works and we look at it through different narrowband telescopes. It's a nonprofit and you're welcome to come join my solar chat forum at solarchat.natca.net S-O-L-A-R-C-H-A-T dot N-A-T-C-A dot N-E-T It's a free forum where we get together and just talk about how much we love the sun and this hobby. You can also go to the main website at www.solarastronomy.org Check out the picture of the day and stuff. And there you have it, the sun in calcium K through a Coronado 90mm. Okay, so we're back now uh, with the 2X teleconverter on the same image through the Coronado 90mm double stack vintage scope. And the prominences are starting to come in more clear now. Let me turn up the ISO a little bit and see what that really is. Uh, that's not the ISO. Neil, what are you doing? Uh, Just watching. There we go. Now that's a pretty pretty decent image there with the ISO high and you're zoomed in more on the prominences and if you hold your hand around it and tuck up your eyes you can see a little better. Oh yeah. Wow that's cool. You can see the feather structure of the prom coming in pretty clear now. Put it back in the center if I can. And there's the top of the sun. With some more filaments and things and pronus is coming off. So this is what I would consider to be a pretty damn good, excuse me, a pretty darn good image of the sun through a Canon 7D. If Galileo had this, you know, we'd probably be living on Uranus by now. Uh, and there you go. What do you think, Neil? I like it. It's a keeper. It's a keeper, he says. <laughs> when, Neil, when's your next big uh, triathlon event coming up, brother? I got one scheduled for uh, October 28th. Going to do the Miami half down in Miami, Florida. And then I'm probably going to do a Rev 3 half Ironman. Might be doing um, Anderson up in uh, South Carolina. And you guys are wearing uh, solarastronomy.org. Uniforms, right? Yes, we are. Your triathlons, and yes, they look really are. nice, especially on me. I thought that they looked really good on me. I'm 330 <laughs> pounds and six foot two. Currently wearing camouflage overalls, by the way. But uh, Neil is is a uh, fantastic athlete. Neil, how old are you? 50. 50 years old, and if I'm not mistaken, you finished number one out of the team in the Florida Ironman by a long shot. Well, <laughs> okay, by a few seconds. <laughs> number two was. I had, uh, I had a good race. But number two was. 20 years younger than you, if I'm yeah, not mistaken? something like that. Okay. What's your secret, man? Good living. Good living. <laughs> I'm with you. All right, and the website's www.solarastronomy.org, and you can read Neil's blog by going to the solarastronomy.org triathlon team link on the upper left of that page.